Now, were you watching um, the Tory leadership TV debate last night? More drama than there was on Love Island. More talking over each other as well. Then you are saying you'd not... be happy with okay. no Brexit. We, and no, I'm here. totally <laughs> wrong for our country. We can't okay. hear. We're going to go to no Mark. No Brexit Who's in Belfast now? We have a deal. It's Panel? Not not a we're going to our guest. A 550-page deal. A 550-page deal. Roy Stewart, we can't hear anything. Can you please hold back? Oh. Well, Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, Jeremy Hunt, Sajid Javid and Rory Stewart clashed over Brexit, their tax pledges and climate policy. There was lots of verbal fisticuffs, arguments, not a lot of listening going on um, and maybe not so many real and detailed answers. Yeah, all the candidates clashed over whether the UK are going to leave the EU on time at the end of October. We must come out on the 31st of October because otherwise I'm afraid we face a catastrophic loss of confidence in politics. If there was a prospect, if we were nearly there, then I would take a bit longer. And I would want to avoid the disruption of no deal. Look, if we're almost there on October the 30th, and we just need an extra couple of days to do it, who could object to taking an extra 24 or 48 hours to get it over the line? If you don't have a deadline, you do not concentrate minds, and that also includes the minds of our European friends. So we have to set the date. Okay. We have to We're going to hear from Roy Stewart now on this one. I would say to all these people on the platform who voted for the deal, take the shock of the European elections. Let's get on with it. Let's okay. vote it through. Let's get it done. Well, Graham Robb is a Conservative Party member, former North East chair, also worked as a press officer for leaders John Major and William Hagan, now works in PR, recognition PR. Um, now, Graham, um, from a PR perspective, I suppose, how do you think it worked as a debate? Absolutely appalling. Uh, honestly, to be honest, it felt like Jeremy Kyle was off the air, <laughs> but a dysfunctional family was using the same format to air its grievances. Uh, the, the two losers last night were the Conservative Party and the BBC, because the BBC could do a lot better. Look, look, this show was an hour long. Mm -hmm. There were eight questions, and there was the, the host. Now, if, if each question was a, around a minute, and the host was doing some preamble and wrapping up at mm. the end. That leaves ten, 10 minutes for that. That's 50 minutes. Five candidates, 50 minutes. Five minutes each is what they could get as far as uh, putting their arguments across. To be honest, as a, a voter in this election, I'm not going to make my decision mm. on five minutes of squabbling on BBC. This is about BBC rushing to get ratings rather than just waiting a couple more days until the field had thinned out a bit and letting viewers, and in my case, a voter actually listen to candidates who are going to be contesting in the full field in the mm. final field and putting their arguments across well, in a rational and to, coherent to be way. fair i mean the, the the field could have thinned out the bbc didn't know that when it came to this so it could have been down to two but it just it just wasn't that's not how it had landed but just who who, who what were your highlights from last night if you could get any did were any any punches <laughs> landed were any points made no, I don't think there were a there was a single punch landed that was a knockout blow. Uh, what I my takeaways were that all of the candidates except for Stuart will leave the EU, even if it means uh, going the, the to, for, for no deal. That's what I, I took away from that. Uh, all of uh, the candidates were committed to uh, tackling climate change, uh, but none were com committed to, um, uh, to a, a target of zero by 2025. Um, what else did I take away? Mm -hmm. um, the, the general election uh, question, uh, yeah. all of the four, apart from Rory Stewart, want to do Brexit, not have a general election early. Um, Stewart's tie. Uh, took yes, away that big he didn't like wearing a tie. Uh, you know. <laughs> so yes, the takeaways weren't huge. Um, I'd like to have a more serious conversation about it. To be honest, yeah, yeah. I was looking forward and thinking that maybe there would be uh, a more serious conversation. No, as far as the candidates were concerned, mm. either they were all losers or they were all winners. There was no one that walked away absolutely with their uh, mm. uh, reputation in tatters, and no one really walked away with their reputation enhanced. One slight change uh, I saw. Between between this and the Channel 4 debate, well, there was an audience in the Channel 4 debate, and I yes. thought, just purely no, politics aside, Rory Stewart seemed to play to the audience better, and there was no audience there, and I thought the others, in a couple of moments, ganged up on him, which there, there are reasons why that may have happened as well. I don't know whether you sensed that. 
I did. I think that's a, a very good point. Uh, an audience does help. I think the television, uh, the Question Time TV format that the BBC introduced in the uh, 70s and 80s works. It's an established way of having a debate in this mm. country. Um, I, I, one of my, uh, I work in PR and one of my clients sponsored a Brexit debate uh, in Bishop Auckland about two months ago. And it followed that same Question Time format. Uh, and the, the public like that. They engage in it. They, they sort yeah. of know the rules of the game. Uh, and I think that, that format format is more successful and the BBC have that format so why they didn't do it in mm. that way I don't know um, but uh, there, there were some points I'd like to make that aren't about what was said but about what wasn't said for example there was a, a load of questions from different parts of the country but none from the north of England there were lots of questions about big global issues and Brexit, but none about things that are really fundamental uh, to us here in the mm. North, like our transport links. I want to know what the candidates think about HS2, which is taking nearly £100 billion pounds of, of transport uh, department funding away from other projects. There are things like that that we need to get into, mm. and perhaps if there had been an audience member from the North of England, uh, that would have been. I know that there were audience members put applications in from the North of England, because a couple of my friends said sent, uh, sent uh, questions in, but they, they didn't, they didn't get through. unfortunately yeah. picked, yeah. Very quickly, uh, from a PR perspective, because you are a PR man now, um, that that moment where Rory Stewart did take his tie off, did, was that a, do you think that was a, a PR idea? Well, look, I, 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 quite, I like Rory Stewart, but let's not judge him like he's the the, the, the new messiah. He, he's, a, he's a calculating politician and I think he'll do a lot of things that will draw attention to him because you know, in terms of votes, he's the underdog. So I, I don't, I'm not going to say it is, but I, I, I suspect it is. Yeah. Um, I, by the way, I wasn't chair of the Conservative Party in the North East, uh, Alfie, as, you said in the, as you said in the introduction, but I did do the PR for William Hague. I did some mm. PR work for David Cameron, John Major and so on. And, uh, you know, they, they, all, they all know that how you look on camera whether you take your tie off or there or not wear a baseball cap or, yeah. or, or, or what have you actually does make a difference so my uh, my instinct is that it probably was a little more calculated than it appeared brilliant thanks very much great conversation there that was graham rob uh, from recognition pr